Somebody shout hallelujah. If you have been blessed by these diverse ministrations, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our hands to heaven this morning and give God praise? Let's magnify Jesus. What a good God we serve. A good God, gracious God. Let's give him the glory from the depth of our souls. All the blessings we have received upon this mountain. Let's give him praise. Our God has been faithful. Our God has been mindful of us. He has blessed us with his word. He has imparted our destinies. Now we are flying. Now we are soaring. Give him praise. Magnify the Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we stand before you today to receive from you. A man can receive nothing except he be given from heaven. We are here to learn at your feet. We have come to be fed. Feed us with your word this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, where we are now is not our rest. Take us further. Advance our destinies. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Give the Lord mighty praise. And please you may be seated in his presence. It's a privilege for me to stand this morning before God's people. To bring the next word to our lives. I want to deeply appreciate my father in the Lord and the person of Bishop David Olani Oyediko. I've pursued him for 31 years now. I got joined to him at the age of 22 and I've followed keenly. I've pursued the spirit and I'm still pursuing it. That shall be somebody's testimony. I also want to appreciate this morning the presence of our national youth pastor. Pastor Steve Oga, we ask for more grace upon his life in the name of Jesus the Christ. This morning, we want to examine another topic. But before I tell you the topic, I want you to know that God has the plan to advance our lives spiritually. He said, Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not? Neither is he weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to him that is weary, and to him that has no might, he increases strength. He said, The youth shall faint and be weary. Even the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and they shall not faint. They shall walk and they shall not be weary. That is what you have come upon this mountain in this session to be empowered for a flight. You have stayed on the ground for too long. It's time to mount up. Tell them about mount up. This morning we shall be examined empowered for effectual prayer life. Empowered for effectual prayer life. How to get your prayers to begin to fly. How to get your prayers to begin to get results. It's one thing to pray, it's another thing to get results. Praying without results can be very frustrating. Where you are sitting right now, just imagine, imagine, if all your prayers we answered. What a wonder you become. That's what we have come to be empowered with here. How to empower our prayer life to get results. We have come to be empowered over our prayer life to take delivery of our redemptive inheritances. Many people's inheritance they are hanging. But very few know how to take it. But when your prayer life is empowered, you are empowered to take delivery of them. Somebody is taking delivery of them already? We are yet to be engraced in our prayer life. Engracement, divine engracement. To walk in victory and triumph. Enough of failing, enough of defeat. You have been defeated for too long. 
But it's time to be victorious and triumphant. Say, that's me. We're here to be empowered in our prayer life for dominion. Dominion in every walks of life. Having it the way you want it. Doing as occasions have you. We're here to be empowered to walk in robust prayer life. Vibrant prayer life. That shall be somebody's testimony. We're here to be empowered to live a life ablaze for God and for the interests of his kingdom. A life ablaze. Don't let your light go down. Don't let your light become dim. He said, let your loins be got about with truth until you become a burning and a shining light. That is you. Say it's me. Let's take our text this morning from the book of James chapter 5 verse 16. Our main text, James chapter 5 and verse 16. The scripture says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual, effectual, result-prone prayer, result-oriented prayer, the effectual, praying with effects of a righteous man, the fervency of prayer. How to get your prayer to be red hot, red hot. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The Amplified Version rendered it very powerfully. It said the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in his working. The effectual, the earnest, heartfelt, passionate, ever-burning prayer of a believer makes tremendous power manifest, dynamic in its working. The word dynamic is taken from the word dynamo. Dynamo means power. It's talking about an explosion, an atomic power of prayer. You pray in one place, you get results. Your prayer is able to network all the arts. Listen to me, people of God. I engage this dimension of prayer to see my family saved. My, my brothers and my sisters, including my father and my mother. Standing in one place, I said, if atomic bomb lands here, it affects the world. So I prayed each one of them surrender to Christ. Please don't live with any members of your family unsaved. Your Christianity will soon be doubted if members of your family, they are not saved. Get them saved. Say, it's my turn. Say, it's my turn. The question before you and I, therefore, is why do we need empowerment to have an effectual prayer life? Why do we need empowerment to have an effectual prayer life. Number one, life is a battlefield and not a playground. Life is a battlefield and not a playground. Life is no fun fair, but warfare. Psalm 74 verse 20. David prayed, have respect, O God, to thy covenant. For the dark places of the earth, they are full of the habitations of cruelty. Lord, have respect. The earth is networked with darkness. Habitations of cruelty. John said, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Wicked devils. Brutal spirits. How to resist your redemption. Brutal. They are very brutal. Don't say your age is young. The younger, the better for the devil. The devil operates on all city Why? Operation, catch them young. He wants to catch you no matter your age. Don't say, pastor, I'm gentle. I'm a gentle believer. I don't bind the devil. The devil said, that's why I want to come. Don't say, Lord, I'm innocent. Oh, Satan, you see, I'm very innocent. He said, they're better for me. The world lieth in wickedness. Imagine this. A young man, newly married, told his landlord after several years, landlord, God has helped me to build my house. I want to go into my own house. The landlord said, oh, thank God, thank God, and gave him a crate of egg. He said, go and eat with your family and rejoice. He got back home. He said, Holy Ghost, what do I do with this egg? Holy Ghost said, before you eat it, take two eggs, boil it, and give to your dog. And he boiled two eggs, and gave to his dog, the dog ate instantly. The dog vomited blood and died. What a wicked world. That's why you cannot afford to be casual in your prayer lifetime. You cannot afford to be casual. If you are casual, you end up a casualty. Say, not me. Say, not me. 
Number two, why do we need empowerment to have an effectual prayer life? Number two, to secure continuous victory as we engage a fight of faith on the altar of prayer. To secure continuous victory as we engage a fight of faith on the prayer altar. The prayer altar is not the altar of crying. The prayer altar is not the altar for weeping. God has no respect for your tears. Your tears cannot move God. What moves God is the engagement of the prayer of faith, the fight of faith. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. First Timothy 6 verse 12. He said, fight the good fight. Lay hold on eternal life. Fight the good fight. Tell them about fight. The good fight. Until you fight the fight of faith, the prayer altar will become impotent. You need to engage the fight of faith. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. First John 5, 4. Your tears can't move God. Your crying can't move God. Even your condition can't move God. Your situations can't move God. Your circumstances can't move God. What moves God is the faith content of your prayer. The faith content. Without the faith content in your prayer, prayer remains important. That's why the Bible says Jesus was speaking in Matthew 21. Matthew 21. He said, all things whatsoever you desire, when ye pray, believe that you have them. All things, how many things? When you pray, not enough, believe. Inject faith into your prayer. Inject faith. It's not enough to pray. Are you praying in faith? Faith is a non-negotiable requirement to have effectual prayer. Faith is a non-negotiable requirement. One sister came 2006 and she said, she came crying and weeping. Pastor, do something. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, I failed Nigerian law school by exam. Newspaper had published that I had failed. Everybody failed. Those that passed were listed. Those that failed were listed. And the court, Nigerian law school had fixed court to bar ceremony two weeks after. And she came crying. I said, do you want it reversed? She said, yes. I said, do you know the prayer of faith can reverse anything? She said, yes. I said, do you believe that everything that is negative in life is reversible by faith? She said, yes. I said, okay, take a piece of paper. Write the grades you want. Somebody had failed had been published. And she wrote 2-2, two, two, second class lower. I said, write first class. She said, first class, okay. I said, write it. She wrote, she said, no, she said, pastor, my faith can only take 2-2. Two, two. I said, okay, you shall have whatsoever you want. I said, now we're going to pray over it. Desperate faith of God. That newspaper publication be recalled, called to bar postponed, and let the exam be remarked. It has never happened in the history of law school. As she did, she prayed about it. We exercised desperate faith. Guess what? 24 hours later, the paper was recalled. The exam was remarked. And they gave her 2-2. Two, two. What if she had written first class? Tell me about build faith. Build faith. Tell me about build faith into your prayers. Number three. Why do we need empowerment to have an effectual prayer life? To experience supernatural transformation by a lifestyle of prayer. To experience supernatural transformation by a lifestyle of prayer. Supernatural changes. Hear this very well. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes situations. Prayer changes circumstances. But one other vital aspect of prayer is that prayer changes the praying man. The praying woman becomes transfigured on the altar of prayer. Prayer does not only change things, 
Prayer changes the man. The more you pray with God in his inner chamber, the more you appear at the outer chamber transfigured. Luke chapter 9, beginning from verse 28, talking about Jesus. He said, and Jesus went to the mountain to pray. The Bible said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was changed. That means his face was literally trans transfigured. His face was blazing with fire. The garment he wore became white. The raiment became white. Jesus was physically transfigured on the altar of prayer. That's what the Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed to his very image from glory to glory to glory. When you begin to look at God, you start to look like God. Supernatural transformation. Let's take a cue from the life of Paul. Paul was a prayer man. A prayer man. He said the Romans 12, 12, continuing in instant prayer. That was Paul. Colossians 4, 2, Paul said, continue in prayer. Philippians 1, 4, Paul said, always in my prayer. Always in my prayer. What was the result? Paul emerged as a God in human flesh. Acts 14, verse 11. The gods have come down to us in human likeness. Transformation. Say transformation. There are many things you are fighting. There are many things you are wrestling with. It's because you have not been transfigured. When Jesus was changed by prayer, the word came from above. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Say command. It's not enough to tarry in prayer. What becomes of you when you emerge from prayer? The same Paul was stranded in the island of Malta when they had the shipwreck in Acts chapter 28 from verse 1. And the Bible says, And Paul gathering sticks for fire because of the cold, a venomous viper came and stung itself to Paul, this same Paul who had become a god. And he felt no harm and shook the beast into the fire. Why the people waited for Paul to swear and die? They waited for a long time and they changed their mind that this man was a God. That is how somebody here, they will change their mind concerning you. Where you have been rejected, where you have been oppressed, where they have put you down, say so you will not rise, they will change their mind over you. Say, believe in amen. amen. Therefore, it is one thing to ask for things in prayer. It is another thing to be empowered to command things. It's one thing to ask for things in prayer. God, I need a job. I need a miracle wife. I need a miracle husband. I need divine health. It's one thing to ask for things in prayer. It's another to command things to happen. God, speaking of you and I, as the sons of the Most High God, he said, ask me of my sons who are coming. Isaiah 45, verse 11. Ask me, thus say the Lord, and of his maker, concerning my sons, ask me of them, for they shall command me at the works of my hand. They will command. They are not to beg in prayer. Stop begging God in prayer. It's time to command those things to be. Stop begging God in prayer. God is not moved by your tears, like I said. He's only moved at the command of faith. That's why I remember the testimony of our Father and the Lord. One of the sons was breached when he was about to be delivered. And Papa was told that the only way you can save the life of the son and the life of the, your wife is for oppression. Papa said, for where nobody can touch my wife. He said, child, turn. And he turned and went. And the child turned immediately. And the child was born successfully. Give the Lord praise. Say command. Say command. Stop asking for things. Graduate to the realm of command. Say I'm getting there. 
What therefore is prayer? Let's understand the platform from where prayer springs from. What is prayer? Number one, prayer is a platform for divine empowerment into next levels. Prayer is the platform for divine empowerment into next levels. Psalm 63, and verse 1 to 3. Heli, will I seek thee? My soul tasted, my flesh longed for the living God to see his power and his glory, even as I've seen thee in the sanctuary. Yet these saints of God, the Bible speaking about Jesus Christ said, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Luke 4, verse 14. A great man of God in our contemporary times said many years ago, he said, when Jesus entered the wilderness to pray, Jesus had the Holy Ghost. But when Jesus returned in verse 14, the Holy Ghost had him. When he went to the wilderness to pray, he had the Holy Ghost. When he returned, the Holy Ghost had him. He became possessed by the baptizer. Hear me, saints of God. There is a level in God you get to in prayer that you become authority before devils. There's a realm and dimension in God. Only very few have tasted it. You will taste it. Many of us are operating far below our redemptive rights. Far below. How long will they be pushing you? How long will they be praying over you? When last have you prayed over someone? Say next levels. The prayer altar is the altar where you build your life to bountifulness, to robustness. Many have yet to experience the ankle deep. They have not even experienced it. Talk less of the knee deep. Talk less of the loin deep. Talk less of the overflow. Many have stepped on just mere wet ground. They call it river. They call it river. Mere wet ground. They say, I've seen enough. You're only tasting the wet ground. Somebody said, God is deep that only shallow men think they know enough of him. God is deep. Only shallow men think they know enough about God. God is vast. God is infinite. God is inexhaustible. Of his fullness, we keep drawing and yet God never finishes. So, to any level you want to go in God, you can get there. God is deep. God is vast. God is infinite. God is inexhaustible. Imagine, no matter the number of tankers in Lego State, they cannot draw the babbage finish. God is deep. To any level, he said, in him we move and live and have our being. Acts 17, 28. Yet, God is inexhaustible. It's time to crave for a deeper, a higher, a more robust level of empowerment. Say, God help me. Prayer therefore becomes the platform to walk in the fullness, the measure, and the stature of Christ. The fullness. Prayer becomes the platform to walk in the fullness, the measure, and the stature of Christ. Ephesians 4 and verse 13. It's time therefore for you and I to break up our fallow ground. Break up your fallow ground. Allow God to get into you and you get into God. Life will take a new turn. Allow God to get into you. You get into God. Your life will take a new turn. Somebody's life is taking a new turn from now. Number two, what is prayer? 
Prayer is the platform where we plead our cases with God. Prayer is the spiritual platform where we plead our cases with God. Ask and ye shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and ye shall find. For everyone that asketh receiveth, to him that knocketh the door shall be opened, and to him that seek he shall find. That is prayer. But until you begin to understand the dimension of the courtroom of heaven, the drama team from those stages they painted the courtroom of heaven. That presentation. God sat as the judge. Genesis 18, 25. Abraham pleading the case for Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, shall the judge of the whole earth not do right? So God sat as the judge. Jesus stood as our advocate. First John chapter 2, verse 1. For we have an advocate. An advocate. His name is called Jesus the righteous. Your lawyer, he stands as your lawyer. God sits as the judge. But one other thing any court case or court room without witness can't fly. Jesus, Revelations 5 1, stands as the faithful witness. So you have everything to your advantage. Your father is the judge, your elder brother Jesus is your advocate. Your elder brother Jesus stand as your witness. Who can bring a case against you? Refuse the devil's condemnation. Don't allow the devil condemn you. For there is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Don't let the devil deceive you. When you are in the courtroom of heaven. To plead your case. You come with your justification. Just like they were reading scriptures yesterday, subsection 8, subsection 1. You come pleading your case with relevant, discovered scriptures. Isaiah 3, verse 26. Isaiah 3, verse 26. The scriptures say, they said, produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reason. Declare that thou mayest be justified. Bring your strong reasons. Produce your justification. Why must I remain oppressed, oh God? I'm a faithful steward in your house. Present your reason why God must hear your case. Don't come with verbosity of words. Come with tacity of scriptures. Don't come with verbosity. He said, don't be like the eating who think they shall be heard by their very many words. Don't come bombarding the throne of heaven with words. Locate your strong reason. Isaiah 41, 21. Isaiah 41, 21. He said, produce your reason, your strong reason. Come, bring it before me. What are your reasons? To give you answers to your prayers. Somebody will get answers from God. But yet this very well. God's word is God's will. God's will is his divine constitution. God's word is God's will. And God's will is his divine constitution. Every nation on the earth is governed by a constitution. It's bound to follow the dictates of the constitution. The same way your God, your Father, has a divine constitution. It is called the Word of God. God and His Word, they are one. God is eternally bound to His Word. God cannot break scriptures. That's why I love what God's servant, our father, the Lord said many years, 1995 at the old church at Rajoba. He said, there is a way you can corner God that God cannot escape. He said, this is not blasphemy. There is a way you can corner God. God himself cannot escape. He said, this is not blasphemy. Corner God. Approach to him with words. Hosea 14, 2. He said, take ye words and turn to the Lord and say to him, cleanse us from all our iniquities. 
that we may render the calves from our lips. Take with you words. Never approach your prayer altar empty of the word. It's time to go with words of scriptures and turn to God like King Ezekiah did in Isaiah 38 from verse 1. God sent a prophet in the name of Isaiah. Listen to me, saints of God. In those days, whatever Isaiah says stands. It cannot be controverted. God said, go and tell King Ezekiah he will die. He will surely die. As soon as Ezekiah received those words, he took words and turned to the Lord. He said, why should I be deprived of the residue of my days? Because he knew he was to die at 120. Why should I be deprived of the residue of my days? Have I not served thee with the integrity of my heart? Verse 4. Have I not served you with the purity of my heart? Will you let me die like a dog? And for the first time, God changed his mind. And sent the same Isaiah. He said, you were the one I sent to give the decree. Now go back and reverse the decree. Why? He took words to God. What do you take into your prayer altar? You take your tears? You take your cries? Maybe perhaps you think you can bribe God with your offerings? You say, God, I've given offering. No. A thousand lamb upon the thousand hills, they belong to me. You can't bribe God with offering. You can't. Oh, you take two words to God and say, God, because I fasted. He has never eaten. Have you heard the scripture saying, God ate? You can't bribe God with fasting. You can't bribe God with your age. Don't say, Lord, I've been this niche in God, in faith, for 50 years. God said, it doesn't matter. I'm the ancient of this. You can't bribe God. The only thing that moves God is the word of scriptures. Say, it is my turn to move God. Therefore, how do you engage the prayer altar for dominion? How do you engage the prayer altar for dominion? Number one, approach the prayer altar with thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Approach the prayer altar with thanksgiving, praise, and worship. Come into his court. He said, come to his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him. You saw the drama piece? Some doubted the king's integrity and began to accuse the king. His side gave thanks, and the king began to rababa, and his head was pinned, and gave everything they had to the ones that gave thanks. Thanksgiving moves God and secures his attention. Thanksgiving approach the prayer altar with thanksgiving and praise. Many years ago, one of God's daughter in this place to testify here. Yeah? She said when the church closed for service, she decided to stay. And God said, give me thanks 7,000 times. How many times? And she began to give thanks 7,000 times around the tabernacle. And she had been looking for a husband for several years. She had passed the age. After the 7,000 time, that same week, her husband showed up. Thanksgiving, praise, and worship secures heaven's attention on the spot. Say on the spot. One of our sisters in Liberia, during the Liberian Civil War, where there was poverty, there was hunger, everybody was starving, dying of starvation. Our sister lived in the community with her children and they had nothing to eat. So she woke up one morning and God said, give me thanks, give me thanks over that empty pot. She gathered all the pots in the house and began to give God thanks. The children were singing praise over empty pot. Suddenly, they were gunshots in the village, in that community. Rebels invaded that community, brought trucks filled with gari, with, uh, with, with, with goats, with chickens, with rice, with granite oil. And the rebels said, we are going to stay in this place. Come out and cook for us. They brought drums. They were killing goats. They were killing chicken. They were boiling rice for the rebels to eat. Suddenly, the rebel commander received a, cough, a signal saying, man, we have to live here and never come back again. They left the bag of rice, they left the bags of beans, they left the goat, the chicken. Say, Thanksgiving. 
everything finish because Thanksgiving finish. What you have can multiply if only you can switch on to Thanksgiving. You have complained enough. Say no more. Number two. Engage in kingdom advancement priority. Engage in kingdom advancement priority. When ye pray, say our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom this realm guarantees auto answers from God. When you start praying thy kingdom come, things begin to happen on their own accord. When you begin to pray, Jesus, this soul must not die for your kingdom's sake. Did Jesus not die for all? Then you enter the auto. Say auto. He says, shall come to pass before you call, I have answered. While you are yet speaking, I, the Lord, have performed. Isaiah 65 and verse 24. That's the auto realm. You are getting there. Therefore, God is all you need to have all your needs met. God is all you need to have all your needs met. You can't do his thing and he will not do your own thing. He said, when I cry, you did not listen. When you cry, I will not hear. Everyone initiates how God responds to him or her. He said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. You are the initiator of how God responds to you. Praying the kingdom brings you on God's priority list for attention. When it's your time to start praying, you see, we have discovered that when it's time to pray for personal needs, the voice is louder. Very loud. You see some begin to vibrate because it's for your needs. You begin to shake. You begin to, to, to call down heaven. But when you say pray for the kingdom, the voice is silent. You can't even sleep during prayer. Because it is for the kingdom. Saints of God, we have prayed like this from inception till date. Praying the kingdom. Can't you see how things are happening? Can't you see how the ark is moving? Without the human hand, but God's intervention? Say it's my turn for God's intervention. Number three, engage your heart. Engage your heart. Engage your heart. Engage your heart in praying. Not your head. Not your head. The head can't touch God. Your head can't touch God. Engage your heart. He said, who are these that engage their heart to approach unto me, said the Lord. Jeremiah 30 verse 21. Who are these that engage their heart to approach unto me? Your head can't touch God. Your mouth can't touch God. He said, these people draw near to me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. Jer Jer Isaiah 29 verse 13. Isaiah 29 13. Engage your heart, not just your mouth. Let there be a link between what you say and what you say from the heart. God's servant in his book, Releasing the Supernatural, he said, believers have two mouths. Two mouths. The mouth physical, the mouth of the heart. There must be an agreement between the heart of the mouth, I mean, the heart's mouth, as well as your physical mouth. No wonder David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to thee, O God. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words I speak accord with the words that comes out of my heart. What is your heart saying in prayer? Hannah said, I have poured my heart unto the Lord. First Samuel 1 Samuel 1.13. I have poured my heart unto the Lord. No wonder God responded. Your head can't touch God. Only your heart touches God. May your heart touch God today. And number four, be specific in your demand. Be specific in your demand. Be specific and very clear. Ambiguities don't fly with God. Ambiguities. Be clear. What do you want? Hannah said, give me a man child. Very clear. First somewhere, 1 verse 11. Give me a man child. Jesus met a blind man. He knew he was blind. But Jesus still asked him, what will thou have me do? He could have asked for marriage. He could have asked for wealth. 
He could have asked for breakthrough. But he knew what he wanted. He said, that I may receive my sight. Mark 10 verse 51. And Jesus touched the eyes and said, have it the way you want it. Be clear. Be specific. And as I begin to round up, number five, engage the help of the Holy Ghost. Very crucial. Very vital. Engage. When you are in prayer, engage the help of the Holy Ghost. Romans 8 verse 26. For we know not what we should pray as we ought to pray. But the Holy Spirit make it intercession for you and I with groanings that cannot be uttered. He that searcheth the mind of the Spirit. Know the mind of God. For he pray according to the will of God for your life. Engage him. He helps to give your prayer life direction. He prays according to the will of God. Your prayer will never become a miss. You pray to hit his target when praying by the Holy Spirit. He is the divine energizer. He is the one that breathes prayer breath through you. The Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. That's why if you are here today, you are not yet baptized, then take advantage that you must not leave this campground without the help of the helper. Oh, how you need his help in prayer. You need his stamina in prayer. You pray, you sleep because the Holy Ghost is not there. How you need to build robustness in your inner man for he strengthens you with might by his spirit in your inner man. Ephesians 3 verse 16. As I round up with this testimony of the need for you and I for the Holy Spirit in prayer. A young man in this commission went for an interview in Lagos. They interviewed him. Orally, he passed. Document, passed. Written, passed. And the interviewer said, well, young man, you are the best candidate for this job. He said, but only one condition remains. You must be able to speak in French. This young man knew no syllable of one thing in French. And he said, Holy Spirit, what do I do? Holy Ghost said, begin to pray in tongues. The interviewers were checking. Yeah, but that's not in the head like this. And he was praying. And the interviewer said, wait, 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 wait. Young man, you have the job. But how come you speak French so fluently? How come you speak French so fluently? Say the Holy Ghost. Lift up your right hand to God. Say Holy Ghost. It is my time. It is my turn. To be possessed. By the baptizer. Baptize me today. To next levels of feeling. I want the fullness. It is mine. I receive it. Give God mighty praise. For that wonderful word from heaven, please let's jam our hands together for Jesus. On this mountain of AAC 2024, day four, it is announcement time. Please pay attention. Number one, praise the Lord. We welcome everyone to the 2024 Annual Youth Alive Convention, the four morning session. It shall indeed be a time of divine empowerment for every participant in the name of Jesus. Number two, good news. The workshop session for IAC 2024 continues today. Time, 12 noon. Please be guided by the following details. Academics Breakthrough, HL Ho 1, that's the venue, and Ho 2 tent. Breaking negative addiction, that is overcoming substance abuse, sexual perversion, alcoholism, and every form of addiction through the world. Age 6 and 7, class tent. Job creation and innovation. Wealth creation, leveraging digital marketing and media for success. Fit win, empowered to create, uncovering the hidden power of creativity. See you, Chapel. 
and career empowered for influence, EHLDC. Emotional health and intelligence, that is self-discovery and behavioral change, junior teams class. That's the venue. Relationship and courtship, eligible single in courtship, youth chapel, and marry, HE04 and O3 tent. Visions and leadership, empowered for purpose and destiny, discovering God's plan for your life, hope win, and empowered to lead, love win. Number three, praise the Lord. The evening session continue at 5 p.m. Please be punctual. Number four, good news. The Hayek 2024 Job Fair has commenced to the glory of God. Everyone believing God for a miracle job will return with a testimony upon this mountain. We are all encouraged to be seated on time for screening and interviews with either soft or printed copy of your CV. Time is 2 p.m. Venue is Covenant University Chapel. Number five, Youth Alive. Join the YAF professional communities today. The professional community is a vibrant circle of professional within the winner's family with a core objective to engage and encourage spiritual focus, peers to peer, networking and advanced professional relationship. To join any of our professional groups, follow us on all our social media platforms, including Link Yav Communities. Number six, a special exhibition for this convention continues today at 2.30 p.m. Interested participants should contact their coordinator or officials for relevant details. Venue behind CU Chapel. Number seven, good news. There shall be Holy Ghost baptism immediately after the morning session within the auditorium. Time is 11.15 a.m. All those who are yet to be baptized in the Holy Ghost are to wait behind and partake in this opportunity. Number eight, recovery of lost item is at the faith entrance. Please reach out to camp official for guidance. And number nine, good news. The Covenant Center for Open and Distant E-Learning, Sikode, at Covenant University has commenced application for a bachelor's degree in computer science. Kindly note, no application fee, no age limit, no jam, or UTM E is required. This session commenced this September 2024. Visit the CCODE stand at 10th FR3 behind Grace Entrance after the morning se session or visit the Zikoder office, Cochrane, behind at the Covenant University, or visit the website link for more details as displayed on the screen. Number 10, good news. There shall be a 20% discount on selected books bought this evening from the Dominion Bookstore for all participants. All delegates are encouraged to partake, to take advantage of this offer. Jesus is Lord. Let's welcome the left hand. Hallelujah. 